Welcome to All Basket Games. I'm Gerolf and this is Vandil. And today we'll be talking about Sakuna of Rice and Ruin. Mm -hmm. The basic premise of this game is that you're playing as Sakuna, who is like a harvest goddess. It's actually pretty interesting in that her mother is the uh, is an actual harvest goddess and her father is actually a war god, more hmm. or less. And that basically those two traits combine in, in her and in the gameplay as well. So you more or less spend half of the time harvesting or growing and harvesting and maintaining rice and actually like maintaining the soil and everything hmm. that the rice grows in. And the other half of the game you spend or I guess even more than half you spent going around the uh, surrounding areas and fighting mm. monsters. And it's like you cultivate the rice and that grows Sakuna as a character and it grows her strength mm. in various ways. And now that you've grown in strength, you can go and fight, fight the monsters mm. better. You can enter more dangerous areas where monsters are more higher level. Mm -hmm. and you can start dealing with them better and better, the better your um, crop ends up being. Yeah. So it's a level up system, mm. the growing part, harvesting yeah. part is grow level up system and the fighting part is where you scavenge for or anything, uh, ingredients for yeah. food and stuff that can you, you can put in the soil mm. to make even better rice. Yeah. And I think it's, it's a re really uh, satisfying loop, which is like, uh, well, okay, let's let's start with the, uh, I already mentioned about Sakuna, but the pre basic premise of the game is that you're sort of, Sakuna is living in the uh, realm of the gods. It's the realm where most of the uh, Japanese gods reside, or I guess they don't call it Japan in this game, it's called uh, Yamato, mm. I think. So this is like an alternative world mm. compared to our world, so there's no Japan and there's no Europe. But there is this Yamato, which is almost like Japan. And one of the characters is actually from somewhere far away, mm. which all, all the things that she, uh, she speaks about, they sort of uh, sound like uh, they're German things or Dutch things or mm. stuff, uh, Italian things, stuff from the uh, Europe. Mm. So in that sense, it's interesting. But uh, so she's in the uh, realm of the gods and some humans manage to enter the place and sort of panic happens and she gets banished with these couple of humans to this Isle of Demons. So the, the island is sort of scarce of any sort of like uh, crops or other food. So you need to have to go to scavenge and start raising your own crops and so mm. on. And of course, the only thing you're actually going to be uh, raising in this game is rice. So it's not like uh, Harvest Moon or Stardew Valley where you get to choose what you mm. grow. It's always rice. And yeah, that brings us to the gameplay loop. So the rice is very demanding to grow and you basically need to take a lot of effort to raise it correctly and make sure that you grow the best rice as possible because it, it takes like uh, quite a while to grow the rice and it's only at the end when you sort of get the uh, benefits, so to say. Mm. The yield is done or the uh, harvest is done and that's when Sakuna sort of level ups and the better rice you grow, the stronger she becomes. So you really need to pay attention to that. And the game moves sort of in, uh, I don't know if you can say real time, but yeah, it moves like continuously. So even if you go out hunting, the rice keeps growing at the same time and things keep happening in the uh, house and the uh, fields. Yeah, it's kind of uh, realistic in the way that you, there are uh, seasons involved. There, are win there is winter, mm. there is spring when you have to put the little seedlings, saplings in place and during the summer you try to keep the rice alive and mm. fertilize it well for it to um, kind of absorb the, all the benefits mm. from the f 
fertilizer and yeah. during the autumn you have to dry the field and then harvest it at the appropriate moment. It's pretty involved in that you kind of have to do, I'd say, all the things you have to do when growing rice. Mm. Starting from not planting all the seeds in the field, but growing them in a separate growing place mm. for them to they grow a little bit so they are at least have the better chance to start growing in the field. Yeah. And involving all the all the field things, yeah. plowing the field and fertilizing it and mm. putting or um, irrigating it, all those things. And I really appreciated it was so involved because mm. it really felt like you kind of got the grasp or got to experience what it is at least somewhat would feel like growing your own thing mm. on your own field. Yeah. And it was very satisfying doing all that work at, and at the end have seen this how much, how well you succeeded. Yeah, so it's very involved and especially because the uh, the time span is very condensed. Mm. So as you mentioned, there's these four seasons that we also have, but it's very condensed in that each season only lasts three days. Mm. So you only have a spring for three days. And that's the time when your crops are for the most part like growing and growing and they grow a bit more to the summer. So mm. it's only about like six days of time in, in the game that mm, yeah. you grow the rice and then it's time for harvest. Mm. And it's really only in the, uh, in the winter that you don't really need to do much with the uh, crops and with the harvesting. So that's the time when you're sort of free to go and just hunt all day and all night. Mm. And so that's the other part of the game that you do go out and you do go fighting. And those two are very much separated. And if like, if I look the game and I see these uh, like two separate game styles mm. where you're sort of calmly enjoying and growing your rock crops and then you look at the combat, mm. which is really hectic. And mm. it's, uh, I'd say it's really well done. Most specifically because there's a lot of moves in the game that sort of send your opponents flying. Mm. And as they're flying, they can hit the other enemies. And it brings about all these chain of reactions. Mm. And that's just, it's really satisfying, but it's also really, uh, sometimes you look at it and you, you're like, Hold on, where was I? <laughs> I don't mm. uh, see myself anymore and so on. But it's it's really satisfying. And I also really like that, once again, it has this same, like if you look at all these old uh, RPG games, the point there was always that, or especially JRPGs, that if you try to fight enemies and they're a little bit too tough for you, then what you do is you sort of go back and you level up mm. and now you can do better. And so this game has the same things, ex except that you, once again, you level up by growing your rice. So you go back and you wait and grow your rice and now you level up and mm. now you can fight better. Or you can also go to like previous areas to, uh, there is sort of a leveling up during the combat, but that's not leveling up Sakuna herself, mm, yeah. but the, her mm. like uh, special skills. Mm. So she has two kind of special skills, combat skills, and she has this like a uh, celestial raiment flowing mm. or celestial scarf around her that you can use all sort of magical attacks with. So both of those level up as you uh, use those moves and you can more or less, I think, just spam those moves as long as they hit enemies, I think they level up. One other thing was the you could make food every day mm. to get some buffs for a limited time. Like getting, you got some power up during the rainy season, mm, rainy yeah. day, or your special god fills up faster. Mm. All, all these little improvements, anything you really like to have, something a bit more above your level at the time. Yeah. <laughs> How you say it? Yeah. So we already mentioned the uh, that growing your rice levels up Sakuna, but there's the option to have like dinner 
once mm. each day. And that dinner also gives you boosts yeah. to your like uh, basic uh, attributes. So you can move faster and attack stronger and yeah. have more spells. And One so very useful was that you um, regain your HP. HP yeah. if you are not in battle. That yeah. was very beneficial at yeah. some points. That's really, mm. really nice. And that sort of uh, eating is separate from the actual leveling up in that it only lasts for a certain amount of time mm. after eating. So basically that you only eat one dinner every day. And yeah. it's yeah. At <laughs> basically dinners are only once. Then yeah, lunch, well, that's but the, one that, meal. That's cool. Yeah, you, you have only one meal per day, mm. and it's always during the night, friendly in enough. So you can start eating during the day, but then the uh, time skips mm. to the evening. And after you've eaten, you can either decide to just okay. It's night time, but I'm going to go out there and battle and enjoy these uh, uh, upgrades that I've got from eating mm. that will last for like a couple of minutes or you can sleep until the morning and then enjoy that couple of minutes of being buffed during that time. Mm. Why you can choose between skipping to the morning or staying up, up at night is because at night monsters are more powerful and yeah. dangerous. That's why you yeah. have that option. Yeah, and that's something that I thought was actually quite interesting oh, as well. And because the I just wanted yeah. to say that the sleep in itself doesn't give you any boosts. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. That's, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> yeah. So sleeping itself doesn't give you any boosts, but uh, so you have to eat if you want to get this temporary mm. boost. Yeah. I, I thought it was really nice to have like that, that during the day the monsters are, I'd say their average strength. Mm they're like normal and during the night they're quite a bit more powerful mm. i'd say pretty powerful in fact there are quite a few uh, levels in the game but i think that more or less like it feels it almost doubles the amount of levels mm. in the game because you're very much uh, there uh, you by levels do you mean like stages stages or, yeah. yes yeah. yeah so there's quite a few stages in the game but just the fact that the enemies grow so much stronger in the night mm. almost feels like it doubles the amount of stages in the game. That's really nice because for the most part, like the reason you go out to fight the enemies is because usually you want to gather a specific ingredients. Mm. And in night time, it means that the enemies are a bit tougher, and it also means that they are more likely to drop those specific mm. things that you're maybe looking for. And that's why it's really nice to have, like, okay, there's this stage that is ridiculously easy mm. during the daytime. But if you go there in the night time, then it's, it's like, uh, it's okay, or it's normal, or maybe it's slightly difficult, but you can mm. manage it. Mm. But now you get like better rewards for it. So we spent over 10 minutes explaining all <laughs> these aspects of the game, and I feel we haven't really talked about all the aspects or the mechanics mm. in the game, but you get the gist how diverse this game is, mm. even starting from the growing rice and going to fight enemies bit kind of having two genres mixed together and then they kind of overlap to each other hmm. so well that you have can get the boost from meals for your fights and from your fights you get your ingredients for your meals and the fertilizer. Mm -hmm. So there's this kind of very intricate web <laughs> between <laughs> everything that feels yeah. so... Well, I didn't play the game, but I watched you play and it never felt like it was getting boring mm. because it was so... there was so much variety with all the little things the game had. There was quite a lot of... or satisfying amount of those stages where you go to fight the monsters and as you said, it's kind of double the amount with the nighttime enemies and the stages themselves some of them had some gimmicks that were pre pretty interesting like mm. the floating water bubbles you have to uh, jump 
Scrum and to Next Bubbles and try to platform your way to mm. different areas. And some are very simple where you just have to stay alive and fight a lots, lots of monsters and get to the end. Yeah. A lot of variety in that way too, mm. in the stage stages themselves. Yeah. But not not very kind of economic way when thinking about the developers' uh, time they had to put into making those. Mm. I, I felt, it felt like they were very smart about their time making this game. They yeah. took every bit of all the benefits they could with as little work as possible. Mm. And they, they'd be very smart about that. And yeah. I really appreciate that from the developer's standpoint. Like to me, the one, one thing that really stands out there is that it feels like indeed that I never got bored with the game. Which feels really strange because if, if you look at the actual amount of like different monsters in the game, mm. I'd say that there's only like maybe 10 different types of monsters, like maybe 20. But that's that's not all mm. all that many different type of monsters in the whole entire game. So you'll spend like uh, I'd say hours and hours just fighting this like one rabbit type of monster. And okay, there's like a separate type of rabbit that can shoot arrows, mm. and there's another rabbit that can throw bombs and so on. But there's like these three different types of rabbits and every now and then maybe there's like some birds there here and there and this bear kind of monster here and there but it's like that basic group that you'll keep fighting for hours on end and you'll keep going through these sort of same stages through mm. over and over i feel like it's a very grindy game in that sense but yeah i I don't feel like I never got bored. I'd, I'd say it's because you get to like choose where you go by mm -hmm. yourself for the most part. I mean, there are some parts in the game where the game takes a little bit of rain off of, away from you. But for the most part, you can you get to choose where you go mm. and why. And and just the fact that, you know, enemies are stronger in the night, you'll, you'll be making the decision where you go mm. tonight and why. And or if you go at all. Yeah. Mm. And the fact that you have all these options and you're making them makes the game feel all that more involved. Although when you really break it down, as you said, it's pretty grindy and repetitive mm. in some aspects, but it doesn't feel like it just because of that amount of choices you are given, or mm. at least the illusion of choice. Yeah. That's one of the most important aspects in any game, having this illusion of having this choice hmm. because when you feel like you are making the choice then you can't really play the game about the grindiness or hmm. any of the downsides because you made the choice and game just gave you the options <laughs> yeah it all sort of uh, reminds me of the uh, time when i first played uh, War world of warcraft hmm. it has sort of that same kind of gameplay loop even though the games are very different but just the fact that there's so much to do and it's just really nice there. Okay, now I remember some bad thing about the game, <laughs> and this is major nitpick territory. Mm. Because at the beginning, you we uh, ate a dinner every night, because uh, at least at first I thought the dinner is essential if you don't eat, because the humans also eat. Yeah. And mm. I felt like kind of a little tamako cheating on the side feeding the humans so <laughs> that they stay kind of focused or in their power to do their task better but mm. that wasn't the case but anyway yeah the nitpick territory is the during dinners you get to hear neat stories about the people they speak with each other about mm. stuff some of them are pretty everyday stuff and some of them really dig deeper into the paths of those characters mm. And then at the beginning, every dinner was like that. You got a new tidbit of story of some character or some other very interesting discussion, but then they stopped suddenly. Yeah. And then maybe when you progress in the story, you got a little bit more, but hmm. they stopped and they were most of the meals were just silent meals from yeah. the from there on out. So I really wish there was a lot more of those conversations. There were a lot, but still wish there were more conversations to fill out the game to the end. 
Hmm. So maybe just a little bit small little talks. Yeah. But yeah, that that's a nitpick. It it, it doesn't affect the gameplay at all. It's yeah. just something nice to have. I would have liked to hear or read more mm. of those characters' interactions. Yeah. Either more stories or maybe it would have been better if they sort of uh, spread them out mm. a little bit. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Because we are the kind of people who who do all the stuff at the beginning. Mm. We don't really like to progress before we feel like we've done it all, mm. and then we progress. So that's why there were a lot of dinners on the first half of the game, mm. <laughs> or first third of the game, I'd say, more more like it. Yeah. And so, yeah, the spreading out would have been nicer if there were one or two silent dinners in mm. between, or more kind of randomization yeah. of those conversations. So, as we mentioned, a big part of the game is growing the rice and fighting the enemies. And that's something you have to take into consideration if you're thinking about going into this game. That mm. there's going to be both and they're both like an essential part of the game. You can't really like ask if you, well, can't I just progress in the game by just growing the rice and doing nothing more. You do have to go and hunt. Mm. I think that the game at least tries to give some leeway on that, that if you just want to uh, progress with the pure action part of the game, you could lean more into that yeah. and leave the growing of rice for the humans. Mm. They make it worse, but then you can uh, focus your efforts into training yourself to fight the enemies, because you can mm. win the overpowered enemies, you just have to be very talented yeah. with the controls you have. Yeah. Or the other way around, you can more focus on the growing of the rice and make that as much as good as possible and a little bit tone down the action part. Yeah. You can just lean either way, but never you can just chop it out of your gameplay. Yeah. I mean, it's true that if you just keep growing your rice and growing and growing it, then you level up so much that most of the enemies just become mm. ridiculously easy. So in that sense, you can do it like that, but you do still need to go out there and fight. Mm. If not for anything else, just to get the ingredients. Yeah. But uh, at, at the same time, I'd, I'd like to say that, like, okay, uh, back when Stardew Valley was first introduced, I was sort of, because I'm somebody who played uh, Harvest Moon in my youth, and a Harvest Moon doesn't have any combat. Mm. But Stardew Valley combines like uh, farming and combat. Mm. And I was at first I was like thinking, ah, oh, I don't want combat in my Harvest Moon game. No, I, I don't really mm. like that. But at, at the same time, when I did start playing that game, it felt really nice. And I think the same goes for Sakuna that even if you're somebody who feels like you don't really like combat games, I think you should give this a mm. chance because I think it's just it, it, it is really satisfying and there's a lot of sort of leeway in that yeah you can grow your rice and make yourself so so powerful that the uh, enemies are much easier and yeah. the combat sections are much easier and and there's this uh, training area where you can sort of mm. go and try out your moves before you actually uh, try them on enemies and there's just a lot of ways to make sure that you're ready to go and try out how do, how you do better mm. on the on the uh, stages. And as well, we mentioned eating you one meal of the day that you can also use that to make yourself like a, I'd even say like like a ridiculously powerful. Mm. It only lasts for like part of the next day, but still you can make mm. yourself sort of ridiculously powerful. And I remember the dying in the game wasn't that bad. Yeah. You die and you just start from the beginning of the stage, or if there were checkpoints, then you start at the beginning of the, the checkpoint. Yeah. And you can leave if you feel like it's overwhelming, and you don't lose that much. Yeah. You don't lose money or anything, I think. Yeah, uh, so if you die, you just go back to the previous checkpoint and you just lose all the progress between that. Mm. But there's usually 
Well, I wouldn't say that there's a lot of checkpoints. Usually it's just start of the stage, but still that fi didn't feel all that bad. Yeah. And you can exit the stage and I think you could do that at any time. Yeah. So even if you're in the combat and you're like, oh no, my health dropped really low. Mm. Uh, I just press start button or the plus button and just choose uh, exit the stage mm. and now you're safe. And you keep everything you gained at that point. Yeah. Mm. So, in so that... it's not very punishing game if you die at, in combat. So. Mm. There's not that frustration involved. Yeah. In that sense. Yeah. And I say the very big part of appeal of combat is the feeling of getting something from it, and mm. it's about that those resources you gather that mm. makes it. I, I I say that's if it's just combat that it really doesn't give you anything for the growing rice part, then I. I'd say it wouldn't be for you if you like to grow rice, but when there's this, you will feel it's worthwhile to go battle some monsters, so you get can get better fertilizer. Mm. That meaning in that battle, that's that's very yeah, important. So Peggy has given this a uh, rating of 16, and it mm. says 16, and it contains drugs, and. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I have no idea why it says drugs. I don't remember any drugs in the game. Like there's sake in the game? Well... That's not a drug. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you can have like uh, amazake and all sort of different... There's honshu and all sort of different uh, Japanese rice vines. Yeah, I can't really recall any kind of drugs. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you grow rice, so you do put fertilizer in them, mm. and you can sort of put enhancers, all sort of things into yeah. the fertilizer. But aside from that, yeah, I don't know what that is. Yeah, and it doesn't involve drug usage in the sense you might yeah. get from yeah. those drugs. I'd really like to know what that really means, but mm. I didn't really feel like that. Yeah, and it also, uh, it's not a very violent game. Yeah, I'm and surprised there's not cartoon violence. That would be very... Yeah, that would be more yeah. like... A... Because I've seen way tamer games mm. with the cartoon violence stamped on it, so I'm yeah. not sure what they... But okay. Yeah. Yeah, but, but bottom line is 16 is not something I feel... We feel like is... Yeah, so the 16 tag there, I don't really understand that. And if you look at like the storyline and mm. the game and everything in it, so even the violence is, it's very like Japanese violence. It's not, there's no blood, all that. I wouldn't say there's any blood. No, it's like smacking into enemies and yeah. smacking enemies into other enemies. Yeah, and also the storyline and everything. It, like if, if you've seen uh, Spirited Away, or any other like Ghibli mm. movie. I'd say it's around like like that sort of thing, or even mm. Tamer. So to me, this feels like it could be more like a family game. Mm. I'd say it's definitely not 16 plus. And I just wanted to mention that if you're thinking about getting it for like a younger person or something, I'd, I'd say go ahead. It's definitely not, not mm. bad in that sense. And even though the gameplay loop is really nice, but it's also sort of like educative about indeed what all sort of steps go into growing rice. And at the same time, it's really, as I mentioned, satisfying with how the combat works and how mm. you can throw enemies. And like this, this is something that I think I would have really like, I would have really, really loved this game as a child because mm. Like all, all those mechanics that where you can sort of learn these moves, where you can sort of make sure that if you do it correctly, you can smack enemies into each other and do all sort of ridiculous combos without being like all that good. Because you, usually it feels like Japanese games require that, yeah, you can do all sort of ridic ridiculous things, mm. but at the same time, you need to be really good to do mm. those ridiculous things. And here it doesn't really require that you just need to go into some place or most of the encounters are where enemies are in a straight line and you can just smack the first one and they all just fly around mm. and it's just really fun mm. and i would have really loved this 
also as a child, or especially as a child, mm. I would have really loved that. Mm. And I, I'm pretty sure that everybody, <laughs> every other is, child is going to like that as well. And yeah, also about the uh, rice growing part. So it feels like they did a pretty good job with the... Uh, it starts out pretty simple. Mm. You de- do things sort of simplified and you do things wrong and so on. And over the years you discover new mechanics mm. and new tools and everything to do things better. You discover all sorts of things and it also leaves this little mystery in you, mm. in the back of your mind about Okay, did, did I do something wrong there? What what could I do better mm. in the next year's harvest? Yeah, the game doesn't really handhold you too much. It gives you the tools and the tips you need. Mm. And most of the uh, details you have to figure out yourself yeah. by just experimenting mm. and realizing, oh, I just maybe put the too much salt in the <laughs> soil <laughs> yeah. and now it's very salty. Yeah, like... Indeed, you may notice that the uh, there's all sort of stats with your mm. rice, so you can see that oh, okay, so they're being kind of spindly. Mm. So uh, what does that mean? The game doesn't really tell you. Maybe you can talk with one of the people, and they can tell you sort of basic instructions about how you mm. at at this stage of the uh, growing you should do this and do that, and make sure that the water level is this and the. Uh, temperature is that and so on mm. and you just try to follow those and over the years figure out what you've done wrong or what you've done right and you maybe you put in uh, salt because you notice that okay that kept, that keeps the bugs away or it keeps the yeah, not bugs away weeds. but the, yeah the weeds away and then you start notice that oh there's this salt damage Mm. coming up there and okay <laughs> that's not good so maybe there's a bit too much salt and maybe mm. I shouldn't put that too much and now then the uh, like weeds start coming back and so it, it's like uh, it's it's just really interesting and intri- intricate yeah you actually just described a very big ed- educational part of the game mm. especially for kids for learning this balancing yeah. part of the life, not not only in uh, growing your plants, but in everything in life that do you really need to use excess amounts of stuff to get something or mm. is it gonna get bad or give bad worse results? Yeah, that's the best part of education that it's very sneakily put in there and mm. I really s- see how I also would have really benefited playing this game as a child, getting this kind of grasp into this, this everything. No, no, nothing is at the far end of the spectrum, but you have to find that fine balance between right amounts of fertilizing. And it is very <laughs> philosophical, but just trying to point out mm. how nice the rice growing part is. Even though it's just rice, it's not harvest moon, as you yeah. said, but it's very involved and gives you a lot of freedom in that aspect. Mm. How you want to grow the rice and you can choose what attributes you want to enhance in tra- that rice. So mm. it translates into your uh, character's abilities. Yeah, so if you want to raise your attack power or you can even raise like uh, one of the attributes of your character is uh, I don't remember the name of the uh, attribute, but it's like uh, how long you stay sated, so to say. So after you've eaten, satiated. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. So uh, how, a, mm. yeah. So after you've eaten, how long does the uh, benefits of mm. the food last? So that's one of the attributes that you can mm. grow. And somewhere at the start, you mentioned that. I don't remember what you said specifically, but it does also feel like this is some uh, a game that you could sort of speed run, mm. just because of the fact that, yeah, you can grow the rice and you can sort of permanently level up your character, but at the same time you can also just hunt and get ingredients and then eat those, mm. and now your character is strong for most of the most of the day, mm. and you can just use that as a sort of leverage. Mm. to make yourself advance in the game. Yeah. So 
you don't necessarily have to like uh, raise your crops all that much if you feel like you can get far away with just eating food and getting better loot mm. from the monsters and therefore you can make better food and then eat that better food and mm. then get better stats from that. Yeah, I just realized how most of the um, these RPG games are kind of hard on you in that you have to choose your road. Let's say in stats, if you can put some points into stats, then mm. if you put it in, you can never change it anyway. Mm. You just have to leave with the stats being, or the points put in the beginning in the wrong places. Mm. Some games do have some kind of resetting, you know, reset mechanic mm. to kind of put your points into different places. But this game, it really encourages you into experimenting and you could one year you can grow the rice in that it gives you all the strength you want mm. and in the next year you can just tone it down to zero and try some other combination yeah it's very fluid in that way that you don't have to choose a path for your character but mm. you can just change your mind in the middle and just start working towards your um, next goal if mm. you want to level up your character towards something else you can do that in the same game or the same run yeah and that's really nice and i really wish more games innovated in that way that you could get this kind of a natural and very rewarding way of experimenting what you re actually like mm. about in your game if it's being more powerful or more defensive or anything like that mm. And the same thing goes with food, so if you, let's say, you put all your eggs in the health and strength pool, so mm. to say, and now you come to a stage where, I don't remember if there was a stage like this, but let's say it's a stage where you could really, really use some magic power. Then mm. what you can do is that you can have dinner mm. that just boosts your magic power very, very much and maybe gives you even like a just boost your magic level by a lot and now for that one day you can do really well in that stage because mm. you've eaten all that sort of magical boosting food mm. and it, it's the same with all these stages that may require you to have like a fire resistance mm. or poison resistance or whatever or maybe you're fighting against undead monsters and you need specific buffs against those mm. and everything like that so you can just sort of prepare for that and that, that's actually something that i really like and something i wished ever since i played these old like games like ultima 5 where you really have to like okay i'm i'm in this town and i want to prepare for my journey to go to that mm. town then I need to like get this much, much food and these much like rations and uh, prepare mm. these items and so on. Mm. And then check the map for route and everything like that. So you can sort of mini do that in Sakuna in that, okay, I'm going to do that level or that stage tomorrow. Mm. And I'm going to prepare for that by having a meal that gives me these, mm. these things. And then you, you go into that level and you go pretty far in there and you notice that, okay, yeah, that stuff that I ate, it helped me this far, but it's actually pretty hard from here on. So you can exit the stage and now prepare for the uh, rest of the stage mm. later and so on. So that's another, another yeah. really <laughs> enjoying part of the game. You may notice that the amount of talk correlates with how much we like the game. Mm. <laughs> All this talk, and we even didn't mention the weapons part, because you yeah. can acquire those two and choose um, different weapons. You have two for your, each of your hand. One is, is big weapon, and one is, or two-handed weapon, Yeah. and one is the smaller one-handed weapon. And On the uh, switch, it's Y for sort of a quick attack, which uses mm. the quick weapon, and then X for or the top button, which uses the heavy attack, mm, which yeah. is with the big weapon. And, and in addition to weapons, you can change your clothing. Yeah. And those affect some of your stats too. Mm -hmm. And the different weapons 
they are for the enemies because they have some uh, not very apparent weaknesses <laughs> for yeah. elements and for the type of weapon you use. There will be like a strike appears uh, yeah. and uh, something else which is kind of like a blunt, I guess. Yeah, blunt, blunt smash. Yeah, and then there's <laughs> magic hammer. type. Mm. So uh, th that's it feels like that's the one sort of Japanese uh, part of the game that mm. I didn't all that much enjoy the fact that there's these three weapon types and there's it's really hard to see or understand which of the, the types that opponent is like weak against even though it does I, I think if you just hit the enemy with mm. your weapon and it shows the uh, damage that you did mm. and they uh color of the damage shows you if that attack was like effective or ineffective. Yeah. There is some parts in the game, maybe boss fights or something, where you could really see that, okay, I have a really powerful weapon in my hand, but the opponent is uh, guarded against that type of weapon. Mm. So it's that really powerful weapon that I have in my hand is doing very little damage mm. because of that. So in that sense, I guess they made it somewhat apparent, but at the same time, yeah, I I don't really know. It, it's not that bad now that I think about it, mm. <laughs> because it was somewhat apparent ac actually that mm. yeah, your weapon is weak against this. And I'm pretty sure you can change your weapons on the fly, mm. even during combat, yeah. so that's also really nice. So you can just hit the enemy once and be like, okay, that, that wasn't effective. Mm. Okay, let me just change to another weapon. Yeah. And even in the late game, if you, I don't re remember if this uh, required exploration, but uh, you can get these sort of gems that allow you to change your mm. weapon type. So you can just yeah. put that into your weapon and now it does different. Of course, the bad side is that you're going to, it means that you're going to have to sacrifice or not sacrifice, but not use some other gem at the same time, mm. which probably gave you some other really nice buff but uh still that's one aspect of the game yeah okay we just dug up another mechanic <laughs> here for you yeah but all in all the game is very complicated but also very lenient about the way you want to play it mm. which is a very hard combination to find but they really nailed it mm. in this game and for me especially i've talked over and over about the fact that I think the best games are they sort of like if you look at the uh, Muso game series or the Warriors game series, they sort of give you these enemies to batter against over and over again. And as you do that over and over again and eventually run into some problems, it makes you try out new things and mm. learn the uh, sort of finer details of the mechanics and this game I feel does that really well as well so you keep doing some stages over and over again and fighting the same monsters again for those loots and those <laughs> tasty ingredients and whatever tasty rabbit meat and doing that you just learn all these uh, like uh, oh I can use this ability in this way as well mm -hmm. and oh if I do this then uh, those monsters go flying all around and that damages everyone around here. And oh, if I use this move, I can sort of send this enemy flying downwards. Mm. And all sort of like little things. You learn these things just by experimenting. And if the game was just linear going from stage one to stage two and you never go to stage one again, then Mm -mm. You wouldn't really learn that, but in this you do the some like uh, first three stages over and over again for the ingredients for mm. quite some time. The gr grindiness, even though a lot of people hate it, it it has its purpose if the game itself feels really mm. satisfying, and that really just works here. <laughs> it's great. So heavy recommendation from mm. the whole basket. <laughs> this is definitely something you should mm. you should get. I remember this game came up in some Nintendo Direct way back, one, two years, somewhere. Mm. And seeing that the first time it really felt like this is very interesting. I always mm. like seeing 
game taking new spins into genres, like mixing two genres together and feeling like I can't really compare this to anything, mm. at least very accurately. So it yeah. felt really intriguing and, whoa, what, what's this game about? Mm. And it stuck with us and good thing you bought it because it's very mm. nice, very satisfying game. I guess one last thing, mm. so I have a personal pet peeve about some Japanese games in that, uh, especially a lot, of, a lot of Japanese games, they like to make things very like uh, square in their games. Mm. And that's something that's pretty hard to describe. But if you look at games like, uh, I guess, No More Heroes or any other like smaller indie Japanese title, it always feels like the ground is always like super flat. And if you look at the Harvest Moon games, that game after the original, I guess the uh, PlayStation and the Nintendo 64 and the GameCube uh, type of Harvest Moon games, uh, in those, yeah, sure, you you can grow a lot of different kind of crops, but they're always in these like neat little square areas, mm. and everything is very neat and very squarey. And it's like, yes, this is specifically the one place where you can put put your stuff, and nowhere else. Mm. And at first, when I saw Sakuna, I was thinking that, oh, oh no, is this one of those kind of games? Mm. Because the rice field that you do have, it is this like a squarey area and you can't grow your rice anywhere else. But everything else in this game doesn't feel like that. There's, mm. there's no squares here. It's all very like natural. Even the stages in the game, it feels very natural. Mm. And all the ground that you're travel, traversing, it's very rarely like a flat area unless mm. you're in a like a celestial city or something some place like that that's supposed to be flat but everything else is just really organic yeah organic everything feels organic and there mm. are things that can break if you're fighting on barricades and stuff mm. like that so it's just i think to me it feels like the environments are also just mm. really well done yeah definitely get it get this mm -hmm. if you <laughs> thought that even one part of the discussion sounded interesting then mm. definitely yeah was uh, this only on switch uh switch no game? no actually that's one other thing that i wanted to mm. say so the uh, switch version has some uh like small frame rate issues so if you hate those then you can get the game on i think it's on all consoles so you can get get it on xbox or playstation 4 I didn't think it's bad, mm. so it's nothing like a deal breaker. But if you if you do play the PlayStation 4 version and then play the Switch version, then you can definitely see that the graphics are mm. a bit worse, and there's a bit of frame rate issues when you have your crops in full bloom mm. <laughs> because yeah. they're like they're swaying in the wind. Mm. But aside from that, I I had like no qualms about playing the uh, Switch version. Mm. I think it's it's really good this way as well. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, one last thing. Mm. I already said one last thing, but yeah. uh, one last thing. Last, so, last thing. <laughs> yeah, the last last thing. So there's like a, uh, there's sort of like an endless dungeon in the game as well mm -hmm. that you can go into to gather materials, and it, it's really nice. But it's sort of strange that it. Sort of the purpose of that dungeon is that when you uh, finish the game, then the uh, dungeon opens up completely. Mm. And now you have like, uh, before that you could do something like uh, 60 levels downwards to the dungeon. And now you can do, I don't remember how many, but like something like 300 levels mm -hmm. downwards. So there's a lot of sort of end game content there if you're looking for more stuff, or if you're looking for some uh, game that's pretty long aside from the game itself, then yeah, you can continue the game for quite a bit longer and just go downwards at endless dungeon. So, uh, bye it, bye. Yes, bye. <laughs> Comment, subscribe, become our patron, anything. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thanks, bye. Bye bye.